Hello. Welcome, esteemed members of the practical and master class. Today, I will discuss the infraneural approach of the transferaminal injection under C-arm guidance in the lumbar spine. I will talk about the indication, technical tips, and associated complications. The infraneural approach, also known as the retrodiscal approach, targets the posterior surface of the disc and is positioned inferior to the nerve root. This technique is distinct from the subverdicular approach and has specific indications based on its unique anatomical targeting. The primary indications for the infraneural approach are discogenic pain at the same level, foraminal stenosis at the same level, and lateral disc herniation at the same level. Indications for the infraneural approach First, the primary indication for the infraneural approach is discogenic pain originating from the same level. By directly targeting the posterior surface of the disc, this approach effectively addresses the pain that stems from the intervertebral disc itself. Second, the infraneural approach is indicated for foraminal stenosis at the same level. This method allows for precise needle placement in the foraminal space. Third, in cases where root irritation occurs outside of the intervertebral foramina, the infraneural injection is the most effective treatment to relieve the pain caused by a lateral disc protrusion. Furthermore, I utilize a combination approach for subarticular stenosis, such as L45 subarticular stenosis caused by disc protrusion, either soft disc or black disc protrusion. In this case, I start with the L5 subparticular approach and the L4 infraneural approach and combine these with a facet injection at L4-5, which I refer to as a flavo injection. These three targeted areas form a comprehensive treatment strategy for addressing intractable radicular complaints arising from L4-5 subarticular stenosis. I will show you various scenarios you might encounter during the infraneural injection in advance. All these results come from the same patient in different sessions. There is an intravenous leaking of contrast, and then the spread of the contrast outside of the foraminal space, followed by an adjuvant flavo injection at the left L45 facet joint. Intravenous leaking and intradiscal injection occurred in the same patient in different sessions. In the next session, to avoid intradiscal injection, I tilted the needle higher than the disc level and toward the epidural space. If I divide the infraneural approach into retrodiscal and epidural types, this is more likely an infraneural epidural type of injection. The procedure was then covered with a flavo injection. Join our master class membership today and unlock a treasure trove of knowledge. Benefit from updated weekly videos, including inspiring lectures, clinical case discussions, and image interpretation insights. Elevate your skills and connect with like-minded doctors. Subscribe now for a brighter professional future.